Now, if you know me, you'll know I love a new toolkit. So this one got me very excited. I was wandering around Ikea yesterday. Their tool's good, but they're usually larger scale household type stuff. They've actually brought out a nice little precision screwdriver kit. And when I took a closer look, it's very much in the style of the iFixit kits. Now, if you didn't know of iFixit, they're basically the kings of the castle when it comes to console modding gear. And with good reason, they've got a whole range of amazing toolkits out there. So much of a range that someone like me has trouble choosing and I've never got around to actually buying myself one. And they are quite expensive too. This one isn't, it was five pounds. So I had to try it out. So Ikea's brought a new range of tools, uh, picked up the standard household set. It's just a more modern version of the original. I'm a big fan of their tools and the prices are cheap and they're pretty handy to just have knocking around the house. So getting the latest version of this was a no brainer. However, when I had a little bit of a look around, there were more tools. So I picked up this neat little drill bit set, um, which has just got the standard basic bits that you may need for a screwdriver or a drill when you're doing general household jobs. And it's in this tidy little uh, container. I do like the sort of frosted plastic and blue color scheme that they've got going on with all of this. So yeah, that was four pound the toolkit. I don't know, 12 pound maybe. And I also got this whole saw set, which was four pound, which again was a really good deal and nicely packed and everything. So that will hopefully come in handy for the odd job around the home too. However, this is what got me really excited. All of the tools that you've been able to get from Ikea in the past are very much household job kind of tools, larger size tools. Not really the kind of thing that I would use in my workspace here particularly often, but this, well, it certainly looks familiar, doesn't it? I don't know if it's just me, but this micro precision screwdriver type kit is very much in the style of the iFixit kits that are very popular. Um, in the modding community. It's got a swivel top for when you are putting the screws in and out. It's got a lovely little magnetic bit holder. So this particular size of bit is compatible with the stuff like my Wowstick electronic screwdriver. Now I bought this a while ago instead of getting one of the iFixit kits. If I'm honest, it's been a little disappointing. It was really expensive and it doesn't tend to, I don't think it's quite got enough torque. Uh, it struggles with screws in terms of its power and it doesn't hold its charge particularly well. It's good, it's useful. It's just not as amazing as I was hoping it would be. And I think I probably would have been better instead of getting this, um, getting one of the iFixit kits. But it was something I was always meaning to get around to doing. Again, they're quite expensive as well, but from what I've heard, very much worth the money. This is not expensive. This was five pounds, so it was definitely something I had to pick up and try out. It's got a decent enough selection of bits, but there are a few shortcomings. It didn't say anything much on here, but it did say that there is a, a Y-wing screwdriver. Um, there is also the Torx bit with the hole out of it that we need for the Xbox controllers. So that was enough for me to think, right, yep, okay, we'll go for it. But when I got it home and opened it up, the tri-wing bit is bizarrely absolutely tiny um which is great for very precision jobs but for a lot of the things that i do not so much so obviously what we've got here is just a general precision screwdriver set the iFixit kits are very much targeted towards people who take apart games consoles controllers phones all that kind of thing but the key things that are missing are the game bit type drivers now that is pretty rare and unexpected that they would come in a kit like this because they're generally only used on nintendo stuff like the game boy cartridges to get the little socket out of the back there or on the older nintendo consoles such as the super nintendo um for these screws in here you would need this this dedicated driver to get those out the ifixit kits do actually come with bits like this which is really really cool but again with that being specific to those nintendo consoles it is pretty niche the bit that's the glaring omission to me is the lack of a decent sized tri-wing screwdriver. It's something that I use all the time. And considering there's a whole load of different Torx bits in there, like there's the T3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 there, which is great if I end up needing those bits. We've got three different crosshead screws. We've got three different hex bits. There's some star bits down here, which are slightly different to the, the Torx bits. The Torx have like six points on the stars. These star bits have five. There's like three of those there's a triangle bit there's 
a sort of a, a screwdriver that's flattened off with a little point sticking out of this sort of two pronged bit. I mean, there were just a few things like that I didn't really feel like I needed compared to just swapping one of those out for just one decent sized tri wing bit. So that for me is is the one letdown. But the kit itself is nice. Um, there's a sort of a rubberized grip to the the screwdriver itself. It is all plastic. Um, it is magnetic in the bit there, so you can take any of your bits drop them in and they'll just magnetize in place they're easy to get back out again the holder appears to be i don't i mean they sit quite well in there i don't know whether it's just because they've got that slight layer of oil on them to stop them rusting that's holding them in place but it feels slightly mag yeah feels magnetic on the back of these which holds all the bits in place which is nice it's a nice color everything fits in we've got the little clear tray and come on it's it's five pounds so it seems like a great kit but is it useful if you are a modder and is it worth seeking out and buying so i'm going to try and take apart a few different things that i might typically do in this shed and we'll see how it gets on so first up i've got a game boy pocket uh, that is held in place with the old style tri-wing screws these here like this uh this is what the original game Game Boy uses and um, something like this driver would normally be able to get out. Unfortunately, with us only having this very, very tiny down as a Y06 Y wing, tri wing screwdriver, I'm going to try it in here. It basically just, oh, it just about works. I was thinking it was going to really struggle to get those out, so it does get those out, um, but it, okay. It felt like it was just going to spin or maybe strip, but they feel like quite high quality bits. I've had cheaper drivers in the past that would have just stripped off in, in that situation. Um, but these are coming out absolutely fine. You do need to push in quite hard in, in the first instance to get them to start turning. I think if you just started turning freely it would it, that just slipped around there and i am wary of of stripping it off but so far it feels pretty solid it definitely isn't the right tool for the job like if i was to use the the proper trying screwdriver of the, of the larger size like this it just locks into the screw starts turning it no problem at all but it works and then once we are inside the main shell, let's just lift this off the back here. I had all sorts of problems with this Game Boy at the time, I tried all sorts of different things. So yeah, there's a few extra bits and bobs in here. Once you are inside though, uh, we've got crosshead screws and I've got plenty of larger Phillips and posi screws as well because obviously they're, they're slightly different so if i was one i'm not going to take apart much more of this one now but if i was wanting to take any more out i'll just swap over to that that crosshead bit and it takes those out no problem at all so okay game boy pocket gets a pass that's all right and as with all of these sort of things if you've got a thread in place you don't want to damage it so what you've got to do is get your console back together let's just make sure i've got that in the right spot there when you are starting to get them in so i'll swap back over to the tri ring see how it is for getting them back in again um you unscrew until you feel a pop like that and then back in and then that'll locate it in its thread um nipping them up at the end with this is slightly trickier because you haven't quite got the grip however with these sort of shells over tightening is a big issue so it'll prevent you from doing that if you want to put a positive spin on it you know i like to try and be positive this is really comfortable to use though the driver itself with the rubber grip it's like it's rounded and it's flattened off on the sides with like a textured grip there and a smooth surface on that side and also this rounded over cap that just sort of sits in your hand as it it spins it's really comfortable to use so despite us being stuck with a smaller tri-wing bit it actually does work and if we've only got one tri-wing bit as we'll find out later because i've got some slightly more modern bits and pieces to take apart with smaller screws you can't get a smaller screw out with a bigger driver but if we can get the bigger screws out with the smaller driver then maybe that is the best compromise under it till you feel that pop and then screw it in place so having the smaller profile to the bits means that like in in tiny gaps like this this narrower section can can fit in quite well so quite happy with that wasn't expecting it to work 
on the Game Boy Pocket. Well, that was pretty good. I was going to test it with a DMG and I brought this one out. However, this is a retro modding custom shell and I used the screws that came with it that are actually cross head screws. So if I was going to take this apart, that would be really straightforward because I've got the large size Phillips bit. But the thing I want to test out is, is this section long enough? The bits that come with my wow stick are this long. This is one of the IKEA bits. They're exactly the same size, so it should be okay. However, if you compare when that bit is in the wow stick, the actual section here where you insert the socket. Now you insert the bit, that's the socket, isn't it? So the, the socket there is quite a bit narrower than this. So if I was trying to get in there, that can often compensate. With this, it being slightly wider, you basically need the depth of the hole to be no more than this distance here. But fortunately with the Game Boy, that is fine. That's all okay. And if we're going into the battery compartment, we can fit. We have to lean slightly over here, but we can fit to access those screws. So yeah, I would say getting apart a Game Boy is gonna be absolutely fine. Even if you have to use the small tri-wing bit, that would be the same size screws as the Game Boy Pocket. Now just to add to that theory a little bit. I've got a Game Boy Advance because that uses the same size tri-wing screws. Uh, we'll see if I was just lucky with the Game Boy Pocket and try it out with this. Some of these are near the surface. I will need the tri-wing bit and again it is very small this 061 but if I try the same approach as I did with the Game Boy Pocket, just apply some force and rotate. It does get the screws out. That has come out okay. I'm not going to take apart the entire console this time. It's very similar setup to the Game Boy Pocket. Once you're inside, there are crosshead screws that won't cause you any bother with this kit at all. It's just the tri-wings that are a slight concern to me. This hole here is probably about the deepest one, probably about the most awkward to get to. Uh, so we'll try that one. I can locate in the screw quite easily. Again, apply pressure, start unscrewing. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. So if you are a beginner just getting into modding, don't necessarily want to shell out on an expensive kit like the iFixit one, this might be a good option for you. Let's look at the other stuff that I've brought out. So I've got an OG DS. Um, that one has slightly smaller tri-wing screws in there so I'm assuming this will be a bit easier to get apart I'm not again not going to take apart the whole console just trying to get these screws out this I didn't feel like I had to really push too hard on the screws at all they've got a much smaller opening for a tri-wing screw to the point where something like this is actually better than if you were trying to use a, a larger one that I would I would normally use so in this case once you get beyond the Game Boy series and onto the DS not bad at all um, so I am assuming that DS Lite will be very straightforward with this kit as well but there's only one way to find out and I've got DS light here you've got a crosshead to access the battery compartment which is quite a small one let's just see that one there seems a bit big so I'll swap for the next one down the PH00 um, that will get my will it get my battery lid open let's see it seems to be struggling there so maybe I was better with the PH0 after all let's try that yeah that locks in that's fine. But you know, you've got that versatility to get the tools you want. I'm not going to take out my battery because it resets the whole system and I'm going to have to redo all of my settings and things. But I am going to try out the tri-wing with this one. And again, I think if it's anything like the others, it should be okay. But it's actually, these screws are locked in a little bit more securely. It doesn't seem to want to come out. I don't know if with force I've ended up wearing this down a bit. A close inspection of the bit shows the bit is okay. It's, it's the screws that are causing me the issue. Let's just try my usual technique. Pr apply pressure down, rotate. Yeah, that is coming out, but you might have a bit of a struggle with these. It, it does need really a, a slightly bigger bit which is a shame like loads of these things that i do use a, a tri-wing driver so a larger one just to replace i mean when am i going to use that that like the triangle bit or something like that and again i'm going to need to use my standard bit just to no in fact that was tight enough actually it's this one that was giving me bother so i'm going to give it one more go use the technique apply some pressure see it's just it just feels like it's just spinning in that one no matter what i do it won't really grip so your mileage may vary when when it comes to these older consoles if there's anything that's going to result in frustration no matter how nice the toolkit is you don't want frustration you'd be better off getting something different so if you are going to be doing things like that then maybe best avoided uh so let's try a game boy advance sp that's got different sorts of screws it's got a similar small crosshead one on the battery cover it's got some very small um tri-wing ones here so let's just try that and there's one of those in the battery compartment as well uh, again, 
it's just sort of spinning. So goes in position there, you apply a bit of pressure, start to undo, but the opening in there is a little bit too big. So although it's a much smaller screw, because it's shallower, your screw bit can't go in as far, which means it doesn't get as much purchase. I am pretty confident the screws inside here will be okay. Like if I try and unscrew that one and get it out and show you, it doesn't want to come out. There we go. They appear similar, but the hole in this one is slightly deeper, which allows the point of this to go in a little further, which allows that to grip. I mean, even to the point where I think if I ground down the very tip of this driver, it might end up getting me a bit more purchase uh, when I'm using it, but I don't really want to do that just now. Let's get this back in. So this is a surprise. I was expecting the chunkier screws would give me grief and the more little sort of delicate ones would be fine with this, but that is essentially just spinning round and the screw is not budging at all. So yeah, it's a no-go with the SP. Now onto more modern stuff, like most people's modding, taking apart work is going to be working with controllers. Over the past year, I've been taking apart a lot of stuff like the Xbox controllers, like uh, switch Joy-Cons, like PlayStation 5 controllers. So we'll give it a quick go with this and see if the bits are the right size. Particularly PlayStation 5 is absolutely fine. That uses the crosshead bits and we got plenty of those. So that won't cause us any issues. The Joy-Cons, I don't know. I'll have to have a look at one of those in a minute. Um, but this is one of my Xbox controllers. I just need to get the kind of um, cover bit off here first by getting in the gap there. That just pops apart and then you get a grip on here. Just pop that off the side and that exposes these screws here. And it's, it's these that were often the problem. But when I checked, this set does actually include those. Now we've got the seven, the eight, the nine. I'm not sure which one it is. So let's just try the eight. That fits and we'll see if that can get our screw out. Yeah, no problem at all. And that's back in there. Uh, the other one I think is like one of the, the smaller ones and it doesn't have the hole. So in our set here, we've got all the way, we've got the T3, 4 and 5, and then we've got the 6, 7, 8 and 9 with the holes in. We have got plenty of the Torx bits for getting those apart and putting them back together. So if you're doing more modern stuff like games controllers and stuff like that, this kit is really good but again the iFixit kit a lot of those come with these kind of spudger tools which obviously you you don't get in this it's just a a screwdriver set right let's see if i can grab a joy con and just try that out okay so these are my fancy pokemon um joy cons so i'm not going to be completely dismantling these but if we look on the back there are some very tiny tri-wing bits so it might actually be quite good for taking these apart let's find out shall we we might be taken aback like we were with the sp but we'll see how it goes fits in there easily unscrewing no problem at all so if you are doing retro builds with like your old style Game Boys, DS and so on, you are gonna need additional tools. Uh, you will need a decent larger tri-wing screwdriver. Uh, if you're doing the older Nintendo consoles, N64, things like that, all the Game Boy cartridges, you're gonna need uh, the game bits. But if you are working with more modern gear, if you're doing, you know, drift fixes on Xbox or PlayStation 5 or Switch controllers, this is a pretty good set. And it's only five pounds and it's nice and compact. So despite its shortcomings, I'd really, really wish they'd included a larger Y-Wing bit with it. it. It would have been perfect little kit then. I've got a good selection of different bits for my uh, wow stick but when that is low on battery um, the actual driver handle itself is really comfortable to use so I can see myself using this I've actually ended up buying three of these sets uh, so that should be endorsement enough to know that despite those shortcomings with the tri-wing it is actually a really nice little kit I've got one for in the shed here I've kept one for in the house and I'm taking one to work as well. So it is a nice little kit, but I will still probably be investing in an iFixit kit at some point in the future. So that's it. As I say, I did buy three kits. I think it's great. It's a really nice precision screwdriver kit. I just think that they could have leaned in to the kind of modding market a bit more. I don't know. Are they aware of it? It just looked so much like the iFixit kits that it seemed like it was borrowing some influence from that. So I've no regrets at all. I mean, come on, at £5, this is a worthwhile addition to my collection of stuff here 
in the shed. I've set this up as a really nice little workspace for doing all my different builds. And if you wanted to see a bit more about how I set all this workspace up and some of the other tools I've got in here, then you'll probably want to check out this video I've got up here from when I overhauled the shed earlier this year. I think you'll enjoy it. Bye.